Hey, welcome back to another episode with iTrack. Let me first start out with a big shout out to all the iTrack fam, man. Big shout out to all the new subscribers. And let me give you a huge shout out to Alice Taylor for grabbing a badge. I appreciate that. If you haven't been here before, what we like to do is take a look at the most interesting and creepy TikToks and kind of evaluate for ourselves whether these are fact or fake. Before we get into it, go ahead and smash that like button so we can get this channel and this video deeper in the algorithm so more people have a chance to evaluate for themselves as well. Smash that subscribe button if you're not already a part of the iTrack fam. Without any further ado, let's go ahead and get right into it. There is an ancient tradition known as Hermeticism, which have been closely guarded for centuries. It aims to harmonize the diverse occult knowledge acquired by students providing a master key to open inner doors in the Temple of Mystery. The Hermetic teachings date back to the time of Hermes Trismegistus. These teachings have influenced religions and philosophies worldwide, serving as a unifying force. The Hermetics follow a policy of secrecy, reserving the deep truths for those ready to comprehend them. Throughout history, the Hermetic teachings have been safeguarded by devoted initiates, passing the wisdom from lip to ear. The Hermetic philosophy originating in ancient Egypt has influenced various cultures but has not been tied to any specific religious sect. Hermes Trismegistus's teachings are containing maxims and precepts of Hermetic alchemy, which primarily focuses on mental forces and not material elements. This video aims to present these teachings with explanations to aid modern students in understanding this esoteric knowledge. The principles of truth are seven. He who knows these understandingly possesses the magic key before whose touch all the doors of the temple fly open. The all is mind, the universe is mental. The principle of mentalism posits that everything in the universe has its fundamental roots in the realm of the mind. It declares that the all, representing the entirety of existence, is synonymous with the concept of mind or consciousness. As per this principle, the universe and all its manifestations arise from the workings of the cosmic mind. Everything that exists, whether tangible or intangible, is a product of the universal mind. Beyond the physical matter and observable phenomena, there exists a vast cosmic consciousness or intelligence, which serves as the source of creation and the driving force behind all aspects of existence. Yeah, I'm big on learning new things and taking on new information. I think that's one of the major keys to leveling up for sure. A mysterious, shiny, golden egg-like object was discovered yesterday on the seafloor two miles deep near an extinct volcano about 250 miles off the coast of southern Alaska. The golden orb had a hole in it as if something may have hatched out. The NOAA Ocean Explorer team is not sure what exactly the object is, and a remotely operated arm was used to suction the potential egg up for lab testing. The scientist also noted that the orb was similar to skin to- Get the video, get the video. I'm getting a video. There's this huge thing making a re-entry right now. A huge fireball up in the sky. That's actually sick. It's just leaving a trail across the sky. That thing's coming from like several times the speed of sound into the atmosphere. It's crossing over the sky. Hold on, I need to get out and record this. Look at that thing. Oh, I gotta record on it. But yeah, it's gorgeous. Look at it. And it only took it like few seconds to go from one end of the sky to the other. It's like fading off in the distance now. I can barely even capture it. Now that's not no SpaceX. That's not a meteor. We, we know what that is. The universe is actually a holographic system. It's a hologram is an image Okay, you pass a, uh, a laser through it, and it then projects a 3D image. Okay, it's like a flat image, and it projects a three-dimensional image. But the aspect, why they call it a hollow, like holistic hologram, holistic image, is if you break a hologram into multiple components by cutting it. So if I take a hologram and I cut it in four pieces, you don't have 
a quarter of the image on one part of the hologram and a quarter on the other and a quarter on the third and a quarter on the fourth. You have four whole images that only lose their resolution by a quarter. So everything is contained in all the smaller parts, okay? That's like the reality that we're living in. Our universe is a holographic one. So the universe is inside the individual. And the entire universe is like an individual. The reflections of each other. The other part of the principle of correspondence is that our reality is also fractal in nature. Now, if you studied fractals, these are self-similar mathematical generated patterns, okay? We see this through things like Fibonacci sequence in, in mathematics, and this is repeated endlessly throughout nature. You look at the um, structure of the atom, and it's similar to the structure of the solar system, which is similar to the structure of the galaxy. They work the same way, they look the same. You pull back enough, you'll keep seeing the same pattern repeat. So, uh, the universe is both holographic, meaning that the whole is contained in the parts and vice versa, and it is fractal or self-similar across all scales of its existence. That's the principle of correspondence. Oh yeah, that's deep. I have to do some homework on that. The locations of the 12 stargates on Earth. Stargate 1, located in the Painted Desert, Arizona, USA, near Sedona. Stargate 2, Jerusalem, Israel. Stargate 3, Nepal, in the Himalayan Mountains. Stargate 4, Giza, Egypt, beneath the Great Pyramid. Stargate 5, Machu Picchu, Peru. Stargate 6, Caucasus Mountains, Russia. Stargate 7, Lake Titicaca, Peru. Stargate 8, Xi'an, China. Stargate 9, Lhasa, Tibet. Stargate 10, Abu Dhan, Iran. Stargate 11, Vale of Pusey, England. Stargate 12, Montségur, France. Well, now we know what our next passport stamps are looking like. Take a month, and everywhere you go, everything you do, do it from the perspective that you are infinite awareness, all-knowingness, having an experience. Doesn't mean you don't do the things that humans do, but you do it from the perspective this is not me. This is an experience that me is having. Do it for a month. It'll change your life. Yeah. You'll never be the same again. Yeah. If, you, if you do it and, and, and uh, consciously do it, you'll never be the same again. Because you'll realize that there are, because of the insights you get, because of the intuitive knowings that you get, by the way you feel, you will know that the you you thought you were is not who you really are. Just a month. But you, it's not a, about every now and again. It's everything you do. I am infinite awareness. Looking into this world, having an experience. The experience is not me. This is me. And it will change your life. That's one of those clips you got to marinate on a bit, you know what I mean? This is interesting. In 1923, an American professor and his team made a groundbreaking discovery. They stumbled upon an entire underground ancient world of dinosaurs frozen in ice. Over a thousand of them in a very old and unexplored Canadian cave that would change the world's history. What was truly fascinating was that there were also frozen humans who seemed to have been counting the dinosaurs before they were frozen. Five of the humans were even riding on them. The professor and his team took many pictures using an old camera of the diorama they found there and informed many people, including the Canadian government. However, once the government got wind of it, they confiscated the camera and the pictures and expelled them from the country. Four months later, the professor returned under a different identity with a larger group of men, only to find that the cave had already been sealed off. How many undiscovered places or hidden secrets might still be out there, especially when it comes to government involvement and keeping things under wraps? Who knows what could potentially change our understanding of history if it were revealed? What he was saying sounded good, but I think that was a deep fake of uh, Joe Rogan. <laughs> Oh. 
我靠！ Somehow, some way, he pissed that hippo off. So I just got put onto this video, and it's crazy. Now I'm not gonna say it's real, and I'm not gonna say it's fake, but it does look a little over the top. Now it was sent to me by、uh, a good friend, Implicated 12.0. And it's a video uploaded by a content creator by the name of Ncog.、Um, just here you go. Oh. Seen that? You seen that come out of the clouds? Man, what was that? Oh yeah, that looked incredibly real, like one of those、uh, portals. During the introduction of modifications, which had been indicated by the results of full-scale tunnel testing of the Avro car at NASA Ames Research Center, a continuation test program was begun. The objective of this program was to prove the effectiveness of the new control system from hovering through transition in the presence of the ground up to free flight conditions. The program consisted, in the main, of further wind tunnel tests at Ames Research Center to prove the effects of these modifications, with a short flight test program at Avro to establish that the hovering capability had not deteriorated. A brief terrain test program was later added. The modifications provided for aft deployment of the peripheral jet sheet. From the wing tip for transition and forward flight. I am here to discuss the so-called flying saucers. We can say that the recent sightings are in no way connected with any secret development by any department of the United States. I saw this dude give a story on TikTok. He went to Bluff City, Utah. He's like, "What I experienced there had me question if we're in a simulation." Uh oh. He said we were at this hotel, and then we went to a grocery store, and then a restaurant. And he said people were weird. They're like not expecting someone to come in. For instance, he went to the hotel clerk. He said, "Hey, can we get some towels for our room?" He's like, "Oh, actually, I don't know where they're at. This is my first day on the job." What? And then he went to the store. Something wasn't working. <gasps> He's like, "I'm so sorry. This is my first day on the job." Weird. And then he went to a restaurant, and the Card wasn't working,、He's, and she's like, "I don't actually know how to work this machine. This is my first day on the job." <gasps> like a Truman Show. What is yeah, happening? Yeah. 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 But then another guy who duetted it. He didn't have a story like that, but he said he stopped in Bluff City. He saw this hitchhiker girl walking on the side of the road. He's like, "I just I can't pick her up or whatever." He said, "30 miles down." The same girl. Stop it. Was、right、walking.、Now. Like it always reminds me of the Truman Show. There's got to be a civilization or a community that pulled that off. Something's happened. North Korea. Like <laughs> hey, do you just describe North Korea? <laughs> Yeah, those NPCs are real. Like people see them and they don't really realize that that's what they're seeing.
You see, that elephant gave him more than enough time to just leave. And in fact, like the elephant destroyed his car and then just backed up like, man, I, I gave you that chance. You know how we bring up the shit when people say like, I'm a like devil worshiper or anything. But how's the music? Because it'll be a motherfucker that'll be like, Uzi, get with God. And then I'll drop a song and like, damn. And it's just. No, brother, I don't like that answer. I look at the back scratching his head look at this put his head down look at the looking at nothing look at this looking no away nah bro you gotta peep everybody reaction peep how everybody get uncomfortable mind you these is most likely people that really be around him nah king now i ain't gonna lie after he said that everybody did look a little bit uncomfortable like man you you not to you didn't have to say all that on a winter morning in 1478 on the outskirts of Florence, Italy, the young 26-year-old artist, Leonardo da Vinci, officially returned after disappearing from the world for more than two years. To this day, no historian can determine where he went and what he did during those two years. All that is known is that upon his return, he had become a completely different person with profound knowledge in all fields and behavior, like an eccentric. According to records, after returning, Da Vinci switched to a completely vegetarian diet and began practicing an extremely unusual sleep technique called polyphasic sleep. Da Vinci believed that the human habit of sleeping eight hours at night was archaic and would waste at least 25 years of life. His new sleep method was a good way to increase work productivity and stimulate the brain's state of enlightenment. Somehow, Da Vinci discovered a strange property in human sleep, that is, when sleep is divided into more phases, the necessary sleep time will be shortened. After several months of experimenting on himself, he decided to divide his sleep into six naps, each lasting exactly 20 minutes and spaced evenly every four hours. This method reduced his total sleep time by five times compared to the average person. According to calculations, thanks to this sleep technique, by the time he died at the age of 67, the total amount of work that the genius da Vinci completed was equivalent to a person living and working continuously for over 108 years. That's genius. If I could get more stuff done in the day and not need as much sleep, that would be a game changer. Now you know he was standing way, way too close. The Sumerians, the Phoenician Canaanites, the Egyptians, especially the Sumerians, all the ancient peoples of the world talked about the reptile aliens. Well, after the program, I got a phone call from a guy who later on I found out is an extremely wealthy businessman in Las Vegas. He buys and sells hotels and commercial properties in Vegas, and he was the biggest there. And he said, I'm a Christian, and I have five men who work for me in my office, and they're Christians, and they all belong to the same church. We all go to the same church. 
and all six of us are in the office, and we were hearing you th today. And he said, when you mention reptile aliens, I had to call you and tell you. Every year, we uh, go somewhere in the world on vacation, and my company pays for everything. And he said, so I take, and all, all, five fam all six families go together on a vacation somewhere. And he says, and last year, now this was like in 88, so he's talking about 87. And he said, last year we decided to go camping for a couple of weeks in Colorado. And he says, we were up in the mountains and we broke camp one morning and we walked up to the top of this mountain. We were almost there anyway, at camp. And then the next morning when we broke camp, we walked up to the top of the mountain to look over the, the lay of the land. And he said, that in the, out in the valley, we could see that there had been a, uh, an area that had been cleared away. It was like a realm area that had been cleared away. And there was a circle of people out there, and they were all wearing robes, and they were all holding hands and swaying back and forth, singing and chanting. You could barely hear them. But he said, but it was very quiet where we were. We could see that there was some kind of a ritual dancing or, or swaying back and forth in a circle. They were all holding hands. And there was uh, obviously somebody in the middle, like a priest or something in the middle. And he said, this is out in the middle of nowhere, that these people are out here with this thing that they're doing. And he said, we're up here in the mountains looking down on them. And he said, while we were standing there looking at them, all of a sudden, a second figure popped up out of nowhere. But it was bigger than the man that was in the middle. It's in the middle too, but it's much bigger. And it pointed up at us. And he said, and the, all the singing stopped, everybody stopped and pointed. And he said, we knew we'd been had. And he said, we didn't know what was going on, but whatever it was, it just popped in out of nowhere, pointed up at us, and everybody is now pointing at us. And he said, so we figured we better just get out of here. And he said, when we turned around, it was standing behind us. That thing which was down there was already behind us. That's how quick it moved. He said, when we turned around to run, there was a reptile alien standing behind us. He said, this thing was at least seven to seven and a half foot, to maybe eight foot tall, had a, had a reptile male man's head, but it was a reptile head. It was very muscular, it looked like a human body on the, on the ordinary of a human body, but a reptile body extremely muscular, and he said, and it was looking at us, and he said, uh, it cast some kind of a spell on us so that the children and the women, no one could move. We were, we were like frozen. Um, and he said, and even nobody could say anything, nobody could cry, nobody could run, nobody could do anything. And he said, we were staring at it, and it was looking at us, but it had control over us. It had locked us so that we couldn't move, we couldn't scream, we couldn't do anything. And he said, and this thing was gazing at all of us, looking at the children, looking at the women. He said, this, this reptile alien, and he says, we're just Christians in a church, but we saw a reptile alien. This thing was not of this world. And he said, this thing was, was looking at all of us. And then he said, it looked at the men and the look he gave us, we understood. He didn't say anything, but we knew. He was saying, I'm going to leave you alone. But when I leave here, you better get out of here. And he said, then, and he said the, the alien walked over like he was leaving. is gone. Just like they was gone. And he said, when he was gone, the moment he was gone, Everyone came back to life, and the babies were screaming, the women were yelling, screaming. Everybody came back to life, instantly. And he says, we ran like, like we were totally out of our minds, running back to the cars. We ran down the hill, got in the cars, and the women were screaming, the children were yelling, and he says, and we drove back, and he said it was the most incredible, horrible experience. And he says, all the guys in my office will tell you, we saw a reptile alien in Colorado 
So <clears throat> when you're talking about, he says, so when you're talking about reptile aliens and the ancient world, I got news for you. There's one we know for sure in Colorado. We saw him. I guess now we know. Ain't no camping in Colorado. You can go shopping. You can go, you know, hang out in the mall, whatever you got to do, but probably be best to stay away from uh, camping out there. <laughs> well, you guys, hey, that's another one in the books. Appreciate you guys for stopping by and hanging out with one of the coolest reaction channels on YouTube. If you haven't already, go ahead and smash that like button. Smash that subscribe button. Join the iTrack fam, and I will definitely catch you on the next one.